What's going on YouTube? This is Marcus and we are back for another recap uh, and review for the Braxton's. This is season one, episode seven, and this episode is called Lights, Camera, Action. Now, first of all, I just want to say thank you guys for your support. Those of you all who have been watching my recaps and reviews for this show and have been watching uh, consistently, I also, because one of the things that they've been showing in during the commercial breaks is that Tia Mori's show is supposed to air sometime soon. I'm kind of trying to decide if I, if I want to watch that one and recap and review because I actually do like Tia. Um, I follow her YouTube channel. I'm subscribed to her on YouTube and I, and I love her energy outside of... Uh, well, I'll say it's good to see her on the other side of the camera, if that makes sense. Um, you know, when you, as an actor, when you play certain roles, they kind of see you a certain way. So the YouTube channel allows me to see the opposite side of that. And I actually really like that side. But anyway, as y'all, as I've been doing for the past couple of recaps, sometimes, like I said, things get missed or things that I don't understand. And when I go back and listen to some of the other reviewers give their reviews, a light bulb comes on so something that i did want to address i still think that the family is using exploiting kevin and using him for a storyline which i think is very trash but i also wanted to mention something going back to when kevin had the seizure and he and tawanda were having a conversation and he kind of explains to her that he's scared to be by himself because of the fact that he had just had a seizure and technically he was still in recovery because y'all if y'all paid attention to when the production came in and brought him his medicine he was like very shaky um i just to me i kind of felt some kind of way that y'all have gone so far above and beyond to try to prove to us that y'all are there for Kevin Jr. And y'all really aren't. And I thought it was just kind of strange to me that when he kind of explained to her how, you know, he felt afraid about being by himself, why didn't you offer for him to come to stay at your house? Or why he couldn't go to Trina's house? Or why he couldn't stay at Grandma's house? You, you know what's interesting out of the, all of the Braxton family values, have we even ever seen Miss Evelyn's house? Like I know for at some point, I think she was living with Tamar because she was helping take care of Logan. But like, I don't even think anybody has seen her house. But still like, girl, why you couldn't stay at Miss Evelyn's house or Aunt Trina's house? You know, Tamar is working and Tony is gone. So, you know, those two are out. But still, like, girl, why you didn't offer... Nobody couldn't offer him a place to stay. And it also seems like he kind of masks his feelings and emotions to make some the next person feel good. Because when he said, talked about how afraid he was... Um, and then Tawanda was like, you scared to be in the hotel by yourself? And so then he kind of backtracks and says, well, just check on me. And it's just like, no, if you, if you scared to be by yourself, then tell them, first of all, why was he even at a hotel to begin with? Y'all flew him down here, but y'all, why he, anyway, but yeah, I, I'm really not liking it's inter it, the, the interesting thing is that they are trying their hardest to paint this narrative to make Kevin senior look like, look so bad, but they're really not looking all that good in my opinion. So the next scene we have, um, to Wanda, Trina and Miss Evelyn, they are going to, they I don't know if she knew they were coming or if they just surprised her, but anyway, they show up to Tony's, rehearsal tony says that this was the last week of rehearsals before the show um so they come in and kind of watch how the show was supposed to run um last week we remember that tony had mentioned to miss evelyn that she was going to be telling jokes but i don't think that trina and tawanda knew 
So said we have this little segment where Cedric kind of was like giving Tony her props and then he kind of segues into the fact that she's supposed to be a comedian and she be having them cracking up and blop de blop de blue. So she tells the joke. I was laughing because Cedric, his banter in the background while she was telling the joke had me cracking up. Now, I told y'all last week, I have an off-key sense of humor. I thought Tony's joke was funny. The one she told last week and the one she told this week, I thought they were both funny. But her family, not so much. Um, but And they, they was all in the confessional like, girl, being a comedian, no ma'am. But I think where Tony is going wrong is that she's trying to be funny. Most people who are natural comedians, they're just naturally funny. They just, they say things that make people laugh. Um, whereas Tony is like, she's trying to be funny. And, it, um, and and even in that aspect, just because you can make people laugh, that doesn't necessarily mean you, doesn't necessarily make you a comedian either. But yeah, I just feel like Tony's trying a little bit. She was, if she wouldn't try to be funny, because she definitely gives the type that her the jokes that she's gonna tell on stage, they're like pre planned. It's not like something she just coming up off the fly. They're pre pre planned. And I also hope that she has enough jokes to last throughout the whole residency. Because if you have people. Because I'm pretty sure there are people who are fans of Tony, people who are fans of Cedric that probably might come to the show more than once. I don't want to hear the same jokes I heard on the first show, the show and then I show up at the fifth show and you're telling the same jokes. Um, so if she's got pre-planned or pre-written out jokes, I hope she got enough to last through the whole residency. All right, so we get to a scene. Didn't much happen, but there was a scene where... Evelyn, Miss Evelyn, Trina, and Tawanda went out to lunch. Um, there was this scene where they saw a hummingbird and they recognized it as Tracy. Um, this was actually a clip that I seen floating around on Facebook and I <laughs> somebody had wrote in the comments and was like that Tawanda had ran down a pet smart and bought a and bought a hummingbird and tried to pass it off as Tracy. But I mean, but I do believe in that stuff that when people pass away there is a there are signs that are given to those who are grieving as a way to to I can't even explain it but people who are grieve pe people who have lost loved ones and especially a loved one that you were close to you see a sign that reminds you of that person like for example when, after my grandmother passed away we see cardinals a lot and so we look at that as as our sign or memoriam of my grandmother that passed away but um that was really it for that scene so the next scene we get to the photo shoot they are doing the promo photo shoot for the braxton's um, Tawanda's there, Trina's there, Tony's there, and Miss Evelyn is there. T Tamar is not there. The, the producers did ask Tony, like, how does it, where is Tamar and how does it feel that she's not here? Um, uh, and according to Tony, Tamar is doing her own private photo shoot. Um, I'm assuming she's still in Atlanta. Um, I'm, I guess she's been working and she wasn't, couldn't make the time to travel, I guess. And so Tony was like, if anybody knows a crazy work schedule is me. Um, now if you ask Tawanda or Trina, they might have a different opinion, but the truth of the matter is they not booked the way Tony and Tamar are. But that's besides the point. When we get to Tamar's photo shoot, I hate how Tamar tries to like play dumb sometimes. I don't know, maybe she does that as a way to try to keep herself out of trouble or to keep herself saying something that can be taken as shady because the producers asked her in her confessional, how does it feel not, does it feel strange not doing this with your sister? And then she says, well, what do you mean by strange? 
I'm like thinking myself, now you know good well what that man meant when he asked you that question. But he says, well, does it feel different with you not being here or doing this with your sisters because y'all have done it, always done it collectively in the past. So she goes on to say that she just doesn't feel connected to the production. She was like, I'm connected to, I feel connected to my family, but not to the production. And I'm just sitting here like, girl, Tamar, just be honest and say that you don't rock with your sisters like that. Talking about you don't feel a part of the production. Girl, and, you, and you're not new to this. Like, y'all been doing this. You've been on Braxton Family Values, Tamar and Vince, uh, Celebrity Big Brother. Now you on the Braxton. And you've probably done some more reality TV that I'm not privy to. Like, girl, you know how this stuff goes. And then they go back and play the clip of when she was on the We Sound Crazy podcast. And she was just talking about how toxic being on reality TV was. But... In the interview you did with Carlos Carlos King, you said that there was a new team over at WeTV, which is the reason why you decided to come back. So, you, I'm just not understanding. You signed on to be a part of this production, but you don't feel connected to it. So, why did you... I still feel like they really didn't have to redo Braxton family values y'all could have found another way to honor Tracy's memory to, to come back and do reality TV because girl Tracy is is, is, is is Tracy is not pleased girl at this point Tracy is dishonored and not to mention how y'all doing her son so the next scene we go back to Tamar she's still doing her photo shoot um I think it's interesting, though, that, well, she is an executive producer, so that could be why. But I think it's interesting that specifically with this episode, she's been getting a lot of, like, solo camera time. Although she's, according to her, she's a friend of the show. Um, but like I said, she's also listed at the end of the show as an executive producer. So, you know, maybe that has something to do with it. Um... So we go back to Los Angeles where they're doing the where the rest of the family is doing the photo shoot. Tawanda's boyfriend shows up and surprises her. I honestly had forgot that they were on the other side of the country because when he showed up, it didn't really. When I seen how excited she was, I was just like, "Girl, like didn't you just see him this morning?" But then I, it didn't dawn on me until after the fact that I, that they were in LA and he was back in Atlanta. Now, it's funny because when Sean first walked in and then when they put the camera on Miss E, the look on her face was like she was saying this nigga. But then in the confessional, she talks about how much she loves Sean and Tawana together and yada, yada, yada. I will say that the fact that he flew across the country to see her, I will say that that was commendable. Um, what do he do for a living? Like, I think it's interesting that we are on episode six. And every time they put him on, the, first of all, why he's been on the show long enough to where people know who he is. But I think it's funny that every time they put his name on there, it's always Tawanda's boyfriend. Like, girl, like, what do you do for a living? But anyway, so this is the point where they're taking the group photo where you see Tony is sitting on the chair and you see all the sisters are around now. I was not aware that Tamar was, well, prior to the show airing, I wasn't aware that Tamar wasn't actually in the same location, but I did notice that um, in some of the photos, you could look and tell that she had been photoshopped in. Like, she, it, she, it looked photoshopped, um, but now we know why. So there was a scene where Tony, Tawanda, and Trina met up for, I guess, lunch or dinner, whatever. That wasn't important. But I, I, I wanted to touch on this scene with Tawanda and Sean. Now, it was, we found out in the, in the previous scene that they had been together for nine years. And so in the confessional, when she makes a comment and says that people are always asking her, when are we going to get married? And she says, I feel like we already are married. And it's just like, well, if that's the case, why y'all don't just go ahead and get married? Like, y'all already do the stuff that married people do. So why not just go ahead and get married? And then not to mention the fact that you're walking around with this ring on 
that according to you isn't an engagement ring so i'm just confused like what he bought you a promise ring or like what's going on because the truth of the matter is like girl y'all too old you too old to be walking around with a promise ring and y'all too old to be playing games like because from what i'm what i'm what i feel or what i'm seeing is that they don't know whether or not they want to be married I, and I think that's the issue with a lot of people. Now, it's one thing if y'all aren't married and it's because y'all don't want to get married. But it's kind of like y'all aren't married because y'all don't know what y'all want to do. And it's like, girl, y'all been together nine years. It don't take people that long to figure out whether or not they want to get married. Um, so, yeah. So, somehow they get on the conversation of, because she has to go and do an interview. Um, and so he asks her about her appointment and asks her how she's feeling about it. And she says that she's excited about it because she's not ashamed anymore about the fact that, you know, she doesn't have any hair. Now, I didn't know that the alopecia or the hair issues went all the way back to seventh grade because she goes in to tell this backstory about how when she was in seventh grade, there was a girl that picked at her because her hair was short and made fun of her. And it 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 traumatized her. And so she did everything she could pretty much to try to hide or cover up the fact that her hair was short or that it was thinning or whatever when she talks about how on season one of the braxton she always wore pigtails and i and i swear i used to hate to see her in them pigtails but the areas where her hair was thinning wearing her hair in those pigtails helped cover that up and then when season two came in that was when they started doing like the weaves and the wigs and stuff and so it kind of gave her like a, a safety net if you will um because she knew that because she was getting her hair done regularly she didn't have to worry about people knowing about her hair um but then eventually it got to a point where she just was just like i don't care anymore it is what it is um and i and i'm glad that she has gotten to that point um and that she's comfortable and i also find it commendable that she has somebody who loves and supports her regardless you know with hair or without hair because there are some men who are superficial and would be like girl i you know or either they would make her you know or make her feel the type of way to where she would go and be putting on wigs whereas sean is like girl i love you regardless um, so I thought that was cute, but like I said, girl, y'all too old for y'all to, to be playing games. Make up your mind what you want to do. So the end scene, we see Tony and Cedric the Entertainer are coming together because they are doing an interview on the Jennifer Hudson show. It's an emotional day for Tony, and so she's kind of trying to pick herself up, if you will, before she goes out to do the interview. Um, but of course, when she begins to talk about Tracy, she gets emotional. Um, and after, after, after the interview, they go backstage and the, I forgot who the guy, what his title is, but his name is Kevin. And he's, you know, asking her, like, he said, you know, business aside, how are you doing? Because I saw that you had a moment on stage. I, I feel like Tony might be still at the beginning stages of grief. I feel like her sisters and her mom are not all the way through the grieving process but i think that they are further along than she is because she in the when they had the therapy session with spirit and the, she said that she was at the anger stage and if i'm not mistaken the anger is like the first stage um but she kind of fit but she, but then you know she also talked about how she feels like because she's the oldest sister that she has to kind of be the strong one um, and then also with her, she kind of feels like with her career, she doesn't really have the time to really take the time to process and grieve, which is not a good thing. Um, if you don't have to have the time, you need to make time because the last thing you want, because she was, you know, apologetic, like, oh, I'm so sorry, you know, that was unprofessional and this, that, and the other where i feel like if she had actually given herself time to actually go through the grieving process not saying that she wouldn't still be emotional but she wouldn't be 
I guess she can say wouldn't be triggered as easily whenever she talks about Tracy. Um, but then at the same time, you know, it is still the, this, this was not long after the anniversary of Tracy's birthday. So, you know, there's still a lot of emotions from that as well. Um, on top of the fact that she was not at Tracy's birthday party, which I'm pretty sure that's something that she felt bad about. Um, but yeah, Tony, and, and, and see the thing with Tony, Tony has to do better with like expressing herself. Cause even if you have somebody, you, you can't just keep saying, Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. When you have somebody who is genuinely concerned about you and genuinely concerned about your well being, and they're asking you, are you okay? Be honest and say, no, I'm not okay. Like you don't have to be keep saying, Oh yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. When you know, you're not good. Um, and especially for somebody in her case, you know, dealing with lupus and having the heart issues, you know, that's not good for you to keep all that stuff bottled up inside of you. Um, but anyways, y'all, that was the Braxton season one, episode seven, Lights, Camera, Action. I thank you all for taking the time to tune in. Now, y'all, I got to get, I need to get a haircut. Now, my brother is back home from playing football, so I'm going to get him to get my haircut because that's really the main reason why y'all haven't seen me on camera. But, um... So hopefully by the time I do the next recap, I have my haircut and y'all can see my face again. But anyway, I thank you guys for taking the time to tune in. Be sure to leave your comments down below. As I always, I welcome all comments. Um, I love having dialogue and conversations with y'all in the comment section. If there's something in the episode that I may have missed or something that you feel like I got wrong or misinterpreted, you can put that in the comment section and we can talk about that. Also, be sure to give this a thumbs up because it does help the algorithm and does help boost my videos and my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so. And also share this video on y'all social media platforms so we can, like I said in one of my previous videos, I I do not have a desire to do YouTube full time. However, I want to take this channel as far as it can go. Um, and what else do I be saying at the end, y'all? Oh, also be sure to click that post. <laughs> Also, be sure to click that post notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I post content to this channel and I will talk to y'all later.